All right. Are you guys excited about the word? Yes. Come on, give God some praise this morning as we welcome Bishop Tony Samuels. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. That too love. <laughs> you turn me down in the house a little bit. Amen. Well, let's get into the word. We're continuing what we ministered on last week, living in the dream. Part two, the word connection. Part two, the word connection. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. The praise team was awesome this morning. It was powerful. Amen. Just felt the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Father, we just saw. Thank you, Lord. We acknowledge your presence in this place right now. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you to move how you want to move and do what you want to do. Have your way in this place. Minister to your people this morning, Lord, through this word, Lord God, speak into their lives, speak into their situations, speak into their circumstances, Father. Father God, I pray that you would give me utterance to open my mouth boldly and speak as you would want me to speak. Father God, I pray that you will hear your voice in my voice. And Father, just, just have your way. Lord, I think you won't just be information, but let it be an impartation of your spirit. I pray for an infusion of the Holy Ghost, for strength in the inner man to come to your people, Father God, like never before. Father God, let them be built up as the word of God goes forth. You said that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. So Father God, let living fresh bread come forth this morning. Father God, I thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, say amen. 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 Can you all pull up Psalms 119-105? Amen. That's a nice picture. Living in the dream. Amen. We could do that too. Amen. The Bible says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, just a quick recap for those that weren't here last week. We we're talking about living in the dream. And uh, we brought the truth forward that God has a dream for every person on the planet. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So God has a plan, a dream for each one of us. In Proverbs 13, 12 in the Passion, the Bible says, when hope's dreams seem to drag on and on, the delay can be depressing. But when at last your dream comes true, life's sweetness will satisfy your soul and then the Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. How many people know that God does not give you desires just to have them, just to pray about them, just to talk about them, just to write them down? God wants to see your desires and your dreams manifest. Matter of fact, if you begin to lose sight of your desires, you can't even pray accurately because the Bible says whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. So don't just let anybody make you feel guilty about wanting better for your life. I want to go to the next level because that's God's desire. God put that on the inside of you. Amen. It's, it's, it's human nature. Anything that don't grow dies. Amen. So, so God always has us growing. Amen. From faith to faith and glory to glory. You know, some people have thought because of what's happening in the world, and I'm hearing a lot of people preaching about this, that God has changed his mind. This is not the time to think about yourself. This is not the time to think about your plans or your desires or your house or your dream or this. Foolishness. God don't react to the devil. <laughs> if God already gave you a dream and a word for your life, he already knew what was going to be going on in 2021 and let he was bold enough to give you that word. Amen. So don't, don't let nobody make you feel guilty about wanting better for your life. That's easy because a lot of people that say that already set in life. They already blessed. They got their wife. They got their children. They got their home. They got their this and their that. And now you're not supposed to believe God to advance your life into realms of glory and the goodness of God just because of what's going on in the world. That's foolishness. As a matter of fact, God always uh, manifests goodness in the darkest times. 
Notice when uh, Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden, God didn't go freaking out saying, I got to change my plan. He, he began to prophesy and declare a solution right in the middle of man's worst moment in history. That the seed of the woman is coming, is coming, is coming to bruise your head. That there's something coming that's going to fix this and it's going to bring a bright spot in the midst of darkness. So don't let nobody make you feel guilty about wanting to see your dreams or your desires come to pass he's a good god amen what i'm supposed to do go hide and build a bomb shelter and stack it with water and stuff i don't want to live like that just take me home then jesus i want to live the good life amen the bible says that a thief comes to kill steal and, and destroy but jesus said i come to give you life and life more abundantly that don't change ever amen you think God is coming back for a broke down church? The Bible says that he's coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle manifesting the glory and the power and the goodness of God. Amen. He's not coming down for a broke down church. He's coming back for a glorious church. Amen. And anyways, if we looking like the world, what's the incentive for anybody in the world to come into the church? Anyway, if we running and hiding and struggling and. See, what people don't understand is your dream is not just for you. That your dream is connected to the people that are connected to you. Your dream is connected to your children. Your dream is connected to your friends. Your dream is connected to your co-workers. Your dream is connected to your auntie, your uncle, your cousins, and everybody. You think God just saved you for you? God wants to save your whole family and everything that's connected to you. He told Abraham, all families of the earth shall be blessed in you. That's God's objective. That's God's end game that all families of the earth will be blessed. Look at your name and say, correct your doctrine. I'm sticking with the word. I'm not coming. I'm sticking with the word. I'm sticking with the word when it make, don't make sense. I'm sticking with the word when it don't fit into what society did. I'm sticking with the word. Sticking with the word has got me this far in my life. So I'm not going to leave with that, <laughs> what has worked all these years. So the dream is not just about you. It's a benefit not just to your life. It's a benefit to everyone that's connected to you. Ask Abraham. Abraham wanted a son. God said, I'm going to give you a son, but your son is going to be the seed of the nation of Israel. I'm going to give you a son, but out of your dream coming to pass, my bigger dream is going to come to come to pass, and I'm going to create a nation from your seed of your dream. Amen. Ask Joseph, amen, who had a dream to be a ruler, amen, that God God gave him. It wasn't just about Joseph. God put Joseph in position because in the future he used Joseph's position and influence to spare a whole nation. So that don't let nobody make you feel guilty about your dream. God needs your dream to come to pass in this, in this world. Amen? Your dream represents God's will on the earth. How's God going to manifest his will if it's not through us? He's not sending angels. He's delegated authority to man. Amen. Today we will discuss an absolute necessity for your dream to come to pass. To walk and see the fulfillment of the dream that God has for you. You're going to have to walk in radical obedience to the Lord. Gentlemen, uh, Job 36, 11. Uh, ladies, Carly, God bless you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll change. <laughs> I'll change. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Come on, ladies. <laughs> ladies are stepping up. Amen. <laughs> Guys won't step up. The ladies will step up. Amen. Since we're talking about it, I might as well talk about it. You know, we had a powerful men's meeting yesterday. Pastor Wally ministered a powerful word dealing with the root 
Now listen, there's some people that call me, I knew they weren't going to make it, but some of y'all, I don't know what the reason was. But let me say this. When I was leaving, the, the Lord said that uh, the root was dealt with there. But a lot of people that didn't come are more concerned about the fruit of their lives and not concerned about the root of their lives. Not realizing that a uh, uh, fruit, amen, is not the main thing. That you got to deal with the root, amen, because the root, amen, deals with eventually what you'll see in the natural, amen. But it was a powerful word that he ministered, amen, and it, it's not stuff that we could stay in a congregation, but it was man to man, face to face, God confronting men. So I want to admonish the men. When we have these meetings, come on, man. We used to have these things every month. Now we have them every other month trying to be considered of people's time. Come on, do your best to make it, amen? Amen. Are you all in or halfway? Amen. It says, if you obey and serve him, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and in pleasures. Your obedience to God will determine what you experience in this life. If you're disobedient to God, you will experience the fruits of disobedience. If you're obedient to God, you will experience the blessings of obedience. Now, when I talk about obedience, I'm not talking about the law. And I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about an attitude or a condition of the heart. How many people know you don't got to be getting everything right, amen, to be somebody that's obedient? God's talking about an attitude. So when you miss it, you feel bad about it, and you do everything in your power to get it right the next time. That you're just naturally, you want to get it right. You want to serve the Lord. You want to be a blessing to his people. You want to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. You got an attitude of obedience. And God is looking, listen, if you're going to walk in the dream that God has for your life, you got to be a person of obedience to God. Not obedience to me. I'm talking about obedience to God. A lot of people confuse obedience with the pastor and, and, and say, I'm not being obedient to the pastor. I'm not asking that, amen. But if you're obedient to God, you'll be obedient to the pastor as a byproduct of your obedience to God, amen. That's where some people get mad. They look at, man, I'm not doing what he says. And it's not about what I say. It's about what thus saith the Lord, amen. Isaiah 1, 19 through 20 says, if you have a willing heart to let me help you, if you will obey me, you will feast on the blessings of an abundant harvest. But if you are stubborn and refuse to obey, the sword will eat you instead. The mouth of Yahweh has spoken. Notice it says, if you be willing and obedient, this means prompt to act or respond and i'll add this being adjustable and adaptable to what the lord wants to do in my life not my will but his will be done so the bible says if you have an attitude to be obedient to god and you're willing how many people know you can be obedient and not be willing you can be obedient because somebody's around. You can be obedient because of fear of consequence. You can be obedient for a lot of reasons, but God is not looking for that type of obedience. He's looking for the obedience because you want to serve and you want to please the Lord. Amen. It's an unconditional obedience. Don't matter who's in the room or who's not in the room. I'm obedient to God. I walk in the reverential fear of Almighty God. My life is controlled by it. It's dictated by it. It's, it's being governed by it. Amen. This brings us to a major question that we must put on the table about this obedience thing. That you will never be obedient unless Jesus is Lord over your life. I like to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Do you understand what that word Lord means? It means a ruler by hereditary right or preeminence to whom service and obedience are due. 
It means an owner of land or other property. So if he's Lord over your life, you're saying to God, my life belongs to you. You're the land Lord over my life. You are the property owner over my life. How many people know the property owner dictates what happens on the land? Amen. Anybody ever lived in a subdivision? Amen. You got to get permission for this and that. Amen. <laughs> That's a crazy illustration. I don't fit. <laughs> Amen. But yes, yeah, amen. But but listen, if he's Lord, that means you don't call the shots anymore. That means you're not the boss. That means he's the boss. And let me say this. He's not just the boss. If it makes sense to you, because a lot of times what God asks us, it won't make sense to you. He's not looking for it to make sense. He's looking for simple trust and obedience to him. How many people know God is not going to tell you everything? Amen. He's just going to ask you to do stuff. And if you trust him, if you love him, if you rely on him, you're not going to question the owner of your life. So you have to settle that. Is he Lord over my life? If God said, pack your bags right now and go to China, go to uh, Japan, go here. Would you be willing and obedient to oh, my God, Pastor? That's kind of extreme. Amen. But that, he's looking for extreme obedience. Amen. Will you come to the lighthouse and do the 18 month program and go through thick and thin and finish your commitment? Amen. Look at your name and say, that's between you and God. Luke 6, 46 through 49. The Bible says, what good does it do for you to say, I am Lord and master, if you don't put into practice what I teach you? Let me describe the one who truly follows me and does what I say. He is like a man who chooses the right place to build a house and then lays a deep and secure foundation. When the storms and flood rage against that house, it continues to stand strong and unshaken through the tempest, for he built it wisely on the right foundation. But the one who has heard my teaching and does not obey, it is like a man who builds a house without laying any foundation at all, and when the storms and flood rage against that house, it will immediately collapse and become a total loss. Which one of these builders will you be? So obedience is not just something to do. Obedience is something that you build your life on. Obedience, the Bible says right here, actually becomes a foundation for your life. Every time you make a decision to be obedient to God against your mind, your will, and your emotions, your foundation just went deeper into the things of God. You just got, my God. My God, God asked me something hard to do. That means he's trying to make your foundation stronger. And uh, usually when they're trying to build a strong foundation, that means they're trying to build something big on it, something wide on it. You can't put a, a big thing on a rinky-dink foundation, a cracking foundation, a not solid foundation. And God is not going to build on your life if you have a foundation of disobedience. Nobody can't tell you nothing. Amen. You can't receive correction. You can't receive the word of God you hear the word but you don't do the word amen and you go through the same old drama year after year after year and it's because you won't line up with the word of God you won't be obedient to the word of God all I can do is preach the word I can't make any man or woman be obedient to the word of God that's a decision that you have to make in your own self within your own heart you have to make a decision that this year is going to be different I'm going to serve God I'm going to be obedient to God I'm going going to be radically obedient amen i'm not just going to be a sometime christian i'm going to be a all the way christian amen because i don't want to play around with my life i got a dream i want something better i can't keep going through drama after drama year after year if i want something different i gotta do something different i gotta get it right i gotta listen i gotta stop being hard-headed i gotta stop being stubborn i gotta start being rebellious i gotta listen once and for all
When I came to the faith home up north, they were wondering where I was at. Amen. I was building my life back. I was building my life back. I was building what was destroyed by the devil. What is he doing at that lighthouse? I'm building my life back. I'm learning to be obedient to God. I'm learning to serve God. I don't want to go through it no more. I want to give my life to God. I want a good life. I want a blessed life. I want a family. I want a wife. I want children. I want a home. Amen. I want the dream. Amen. I want the dream that I've seen so many others partake of. I got to do something different. Yeah, you got to get tired. Say, you know what? This is crazy. And when you're like that, you begin to separate yourself from foolishness. You might have to eat lunch by yourself. They might mock you. They might scorn you. They might say, you think you all that? No, I don't think I'm all that. I'm just trying to build my life. You don't know the hell that I've been through. I almost died. I almost lost my life. I need a different outcome. You know me now. You don't know my history. Amen. I need a different history. I don't need history to repeat itself. I'm trying to build new memories. He is not the Lord if you don't obey him. The person that obeys the Lord is building his or her life on a strong foundation. And even though the storms of life will come, they will remain intact. It wasn't the storm that knocked the, the building down. It wasn't the storm that knocked the life down. It was a weak foundation that was the culprit. Amen. It's not the storm. It's not the adversity. It's not your mother. It's not your father. It's not your boss. It's not the staff. It's your weak foundation. Amen. That's causing you not to stand when you're supposed to be standing. So those that are obedient to the Lord, your foundation is going deeper. It's being strengthened. It's going deeper because you got big dreams. And sometimes you're wondering what the delay is about. And God is in a foundation building mode. Amen. It's not time to put up the framing. It's not time to put up the sheetrock. It's not time to put the car in the, 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 the driveway. Amen. I'm building the foundation. My God, you ain't never got a garage. Amen. Are you building your life on a strong foundation of obedience to the Lord? Are you, or, or are you building it on sand because of your disobedience? Many times we pray and ask the Lord for things, and we don't recognize when he's answering the prayer because he first begins to deal with you. He can't put a big structure on a little foundation. So here comes the prayer. And then here comes the stretching. Ah, uh, what's happening? I didn't ask for this. Yes, you did. Amen. You're asking him for something that's bigger on that the current foundation can handle. Amen. So God's got to begin to stretch. He's got to begin to test. He's got to begin to pour in some more word, some more concrete. Amen. To solidify your life. He is at answering your prayer, even when it doesn't seem like it. Matter of fact, a lot of times all hell will break out, but don't worry about it. He's just trying to use in a, 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 a storm. Amen. A little adversity to test, to test the foundation, to see with your where you're at here comes the stretching here comes the expanding listen to this you will never be promoted beyond your last act of disobedience that will become your level and that is your cap I remember in 1997, after finishing the faith home, I was released for a season to take care of some legal matters. And I remember I'm sitting there because it was like, you know, I knew I was supposed to be a part of this. I just didn't know the timing. Anyway, I was trying to, I was enjoying my life out, out of here, amen. But I remember one day I was sitting on a, a, a recliner and I remember I, I put my, my face in my hands 
And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And clear as day, I know his voice. Go back to the lighthouse. Now listen, this ministry is, has gone through seasons of transformation. But at that time, it was like you just wanted to get done and move on. Amen. So to receive that command, I did not want to do it. And you know what I did? The Bible says when you hear his voice, harden not your heart as, in the, as the children of Israel did in the wilderness. And I remember I hardened my heart to the voice of God and I got up like I didn't even hear none. Remember I went out to dinner, I sat down with the family, people that were helping me. How you doing, Brother T? My heart is like beating. I'm like, I know he's on me. You, you don't, you, I just, but what I notice, the favor of God lifted off of me. All of a sudden, adversity began to come. The people who at once loved me and wanted to do everything for me, all of a sudden was like, when you, where are you going next? And I seen a shift, amen, in the spirit. Because once God tells you to do something and you don't do it, delayed obedience is disobedience. The Bible says when God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and cry against that city, the Bible says that Jonah got on a boat and went to a place called Tarshish. The Bible says away from the presence of the Lord. So the presence, obedience is the presence of the Lord. And what did Jonah run into? He ran into storms. Amen. I was reading the story and it said that the mariners on the boat were like, oh my God, what's up with this storm? So I'm like, these are, these are sailors though. Why are they freaking out about it? But what came to my heart was these were men that, that knew how to look at the, uh, the wind and to determine if it was safe to go out on the ocean. So this wasn't a storm that was on the six o'clock uh, news. Amen. This was a storm that came out of nowhere. Amen. And they knew that this was uh, this was a supernatural thing. It wasn't something of, of that, that was mother nature, whatever you want to call it. Amen. <laughs> so so they were like, oh, my God. But Jonah caused that with his disobedience. That's why sometimes when you go in disobedience and you show wherever you show up at, you cause storms, you cause drama, you cause arguments, you cause this, you cause that because you're out of place. You're in disobedience to the Lord and all you're going to experience is storms. Amen. It's not going to be right till you get it right with him. Not me, not the lighthouse with God. I got to get that out of people's head. I'm not going to lie out. They, uh, uh, they're always preaching about uh, being under a uh, spiritual authority and this and that. That's not my doctrine. That's the doctrine from heaven. That's the doctrine of the kingdom of heaven. If you think, I, 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 I actually I hate even talking about because people think, oh, he's trying to get people to be obedient. No, I'm trying to save your life because I know what it's like to get out of the covering of God. When I left the covering of God, I didn't hurt, hurt Bishop Hank Fur. I hurt myself. He was living in a blessing. He didn't miss a beat. So it didn't hurt him. It hurt me. Look at your neighbor and say, ain't you tired of hurting yourself? Ain't you tired of sabotaging your own life? Ain't you tired of getting to a level and then taking a stupid pill and blowing the whole thing up? Ain't you tired of that? You see, without a heart of obedience, the Lord would not be able to fully lead you and guide you into the dream and destiny. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. I can stay right there all day. Listen, 
Don't let your opinion get you in trouble with the Lord. Don't let your human reasoning jack your life up. Don't let, oh, I wouldn't do it. No, what does the word say? What does the word say? I don't want, I don't want to hear no opinion. I just want to hear what the word says. That's the problem. We've been changing the word around, manipulating it. I know they got a lot of versions, but sometimes I go and read King James. I want the undiluted. I don't want all this mixture sometimes. I want the raw, so I start there. And if the uh, passion lines up with the original intent of God and has the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you'll see it up on the, on the board, amen? If not, amen, get it out of here, amen? Give me the King James. Because I don't want a man's opinion. I want God's word, amen? So to walk in obedience, it says, trust in the Lord completely. Rely not on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you, and he will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you go. So to walk in obedience to God, you're going to have to trust him with all your heart. What does that mean? Trust him with all of your heart. So that means you can trust God with some of your heart, a quarter of your heart, 50% of your heart, 75% of your heart. God said, I need you to trust me with 100% of your heart. And you know when you trust him 100% because you have no other reservations. You don't have a plan B. If it don't happen with God plan A, I guess it's not going to happen. But I'm trusting God with all my heart. I'm not relying on my opinion, on my friend's opinion, on my family's opinion. It's going to be God's way. All the way or no way. By faith or not. Amen. It's got to be God's way. Amen. All your heart. Do you trust him with all your heart? If you trust him with all your you won't be asking him a bunch of questions. Anybody ever been in the military? The commanding officer give you an order? You don't say none. Yes, sir. That's it. And the Bible says that we've been enlisted as soldiers in the army of the Lord. Go to the lighthouse. Yes, sir. That don't make, don't, no. You're going to have to trust him. When his instructions make no sense, you're going to have to trust him in seasons that seem meaningless. Without this, you will begin to retake control of your life. And it's only God that can bring you into the dream that he has for your life. Let's pull up Genesis 12, 1 through 4. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get you out of your country and from your kindred and from your father's house unto a land that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee and in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. So somebody say so. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. That's why they call Abraham the father of faith. Because there was no debate. Go, leave your family, leave your house, leave your country to a land that I'm going to show them. That's like God knocking on your door and say, pack your bags, get out of Riverview, <laughs> get out of your job, I'll pack it all up and jump on the highway, hit the road. I'll tell you as we go. Uh, 
A lot of us don't do that. We got to have MapQuest. We got to have the proper funds. We got to know every stop. We got to know every rest point. We got to know what hotel we're going to go. We got to know what we're going to be eating. We got to know what route we're taking. We got to know. We got to know. Amen. Look at your name and say, you're not ready if you need all that. You're not ready if you need a GPS. You're not. God is your GPS. If he told you to go, he already figured that all out. What you're trying to figure out, he's already worked out. Stop trying to bust your computer and trying to figure out God. Just be obedient to him. God told this man to leave everything. His father's house, his nation, his people. God told him, and of course he told him about all these amazing promises. All these amazing promises. Abraham left with three promises. We got 66 books full of promise. We won't leave. We won't be obedient. We won't listen. We won't shut up. So he had to leave everything. If Abraham didn't obey, he would have missed the dream that God had for his life. If God ever tells you to leave a place, a person, don't cry because he's going to take you into something bigger and better than what you left. A lot of times you're crying about stuff you shouldn't be crying about because what God is bringing you into is way better than what you're leaving. It was hurting you anyways. You weren't happy anyways. Why are you crying? Gentlemen, Matthew, uh, Mark 10, I mean, Carly, Mark, I just got to call your name. Carly, Mark 10, 29, 30 says, listen to my words. Jesus said, anyone who leaves his home behind and chooses me over children, parents, family, possessions all for the sake of the gospel it will come back to him or her a hundred times as much in this lifetime homes families mothers brothers sisters children's possessions then he throws this in along with persecution the devil ain't gonna be happy about it so he's gonna try to persecute you but don't get, don't get distracted by the persecution look what's coming into your life a lot of times when God is blessing us and we get distracted with the persecution. It will come back to you a hundred times in this lifetime. You don't got to die to get it. You're going to receive it. God said in this lifetime. That's why I said the dream is for now. It's not for the next life. It's for this life. What you leave in being obedient to God's spirit is going to come back to you a hundredfold. Sometimes we let people that don't know the kingdom principles begin to talk us out of being obedient to God. They see you in the leaving mode, and sometimes that can appear to be a losing mode, and it's really you're just in a process of leaving so you can start receiving. So sometimes people observe your life in the middle of leaving, but God is taking you to, and they catch you in the middle and say, why are you leaving that? And they can't see what you're going to. And then some people are tempted to return back to what God delivered them from, and they let people that have not been illuminated talk them out of their dream.
What are you doing up in this thrift store all these years? You a young man. You could go back to school. You could do this, you that. You up here in this hot. We didn't have no AC. In this hot thrift store, man, you a good looking guy, man. You could probably go back to school and this and that. I said, nah, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm in a process. Don't rush. The, what did she say this morning? Don't rush the process. See, I could have let people rush my process. I could have made them begin to be, I'm, oh my God, my, my oh ladies, my biological clock. And you start looking at calendars and start counting up years and then this and now, oh my God, I'm this old now. If it don't happen in this year, don't worry about that. God has already factored that inside. You ain't going to miss a beat. Amen. As a matter of fact, if you stick with God, it's going to happen a lot shorter than you trying to go out and be disobedient and bust your head and go back around the mouth. That's how you got to be that old with nothing. Amen. By not listening. Amen. Now, won't you listen this time? So maybe you'll have something even even though you'll go through stuff. Another reason we must walk in obedience to God is because when you walk in obedience to God, you walk in light. Somebody say light. Obedience, you walk in light. You walk in illumination. That scripture we open up says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When you walk in the truth of God, you are walking in light. The Bible said Jesus is the light, the light of men. It said that, um, you know, sometimes you watch the news and you see all this crazy stuff. And I always say this to myself, can't these people see what they're doing? Can they see? And the Lord had to remind me, the God of this world has blinded their minds, lest they should see the light of the glorious gospel. So they're in ignorance. They're in darkness. They can't see what you see. So let's pray for them. <laughs> when you get out of obedience into disobedience, the spiritual light goes out. Then deception comes in. The voice of a stranger begins to take control of your life and you don't even realize it. You are being taken away from the path of the fulfillment of your dreams. Proverbs 4.18, the Bible says, but the path of the just is like the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. I need light. I need illumination. That's why I'm not walking by situation, being in a thrift store for five years. I'm walking by revelation. I've been illuminated to my future, to my destiny. I know this is not all God has for me. God has way more for me, but I got to be obedient and walk in the light of what he's spoken and not let people that are in deception lead me away from the light. Without light, you get off the path, the path of your dream, and you don't even realize it. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but it's a way that leads to death, leads to death, not the dream. When you lose light, you become spiritually blind. Look what Jesus said in Matthew 15, 14. He says, stay away from them, for they are nothing more than blind guides. Do you know what happens when a blind man pretends to guide another blind man? They both stumble into a ditch. So you can't go spiritually blind, and the only way you can go spiritually blind is if you get into disobedience. Then blindness comes. The voice of a stranger comes. I don't want to get too far. I'm going to show you what else comes in a second. Okay, let's keep going. So you don't look at your neighbor and say, don't end up in the ditch. Stay in obedience. We get the phone calls. Pastor Tone, can y'all come get me? A uh, letter from prison. They left. They weren't obedient to God. We couldn't tell them nothing. They didn't receive it. And they wound back up in a ditch. And it's usually a ditch that God delivered them out of before. Because they lost the light because they got in disobedience. Now listen to this. The opposite of obedience is rebellion. 
Look at what the Bible says about rebellion. 1 Samuel 15, 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So disobedience is not light with God. It's a serious matter. He says disobedience is in the same category as witchcraft. Now, when I think of witches, I think of a body with a black hat, big old pot, smoke coming out, throwing spells and all that. But the Bible says, nah. There <laughs> could be a witch right next to you. Fellas, y'all better watch. Husband, don't look straight ahead. My God. Don't even flinch. I'm teaching you how to recognize it. So God calls disobedience and rebellion, and he said rebellion is as the, is as the sin of witchcraft. Wow, no Christian wants to be a witch. But if you're in disobedience to God or rebellion to God, you're operating in the same spirit as witches. What is a witch doing? She's trying to counter. You hear some of these Christian meetings, these witches show up, try to throw spells and, and uh, blood on, on Christian events. They're trying to work against God. They're trying to resist the Lord. They're trying to come against God. They're trying to blaspheme the name of God. And the Bible says when you're disobedient to God, you're operating like a witch. Look at your name and say, wow. Listen. That's why my uh, bishop, I never rose up against him. I'll be obedient to God, but not man. You're out of order. God is in heaven. He uses man on earth. If you're disobedient to a man that God has placed you over, you're actually disobedient to God, and you're a witch, and you don't even realize it. I told the staff, I said, listen, you can't be for the lighthouse and not be for me. You can't celebrate the lighthouse and not celebrate the leader that God has placed over the lighthouse. All you're doing is coming here operating as a witch. Oh, man, it's heavy. Oh, man. Let me tell you something. I would not go to a church if I could not honor the man of God that God put in the church. I'm going to save him the trouble and myself the trouble and the church and the spiritual climate of the church the trouble and not be a hindrance to what God is doing. So don't tell me you're obedient to God and you're disobedient to the authority that God has placed over your life. I love the lighthouse, but that pastor told I ain't with that dude. Well, you're playing a religious game. I never separated a lighthouse from my bishop. I know if things didn't go good with him, it's time for me to go. <laughs> it's the game over, amen? I'm not going to be here in disagreement with the leader of the ministry and still be functioning in the ministry. That's not only witches, that's insanity. That's spiritual craziness. That's spiritual deception. That's why I said I'd be having me as people come in my office trying to correct me. Trying to tell me what's wrong with the ministry and what I need to do to get it on, 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 on point. And all I do is smile. But inside I'm like, you're a witch. You don't honor me. You think you're an authority over me. Amen. I 
I can keep going with that one, but we got to wrap it up. Amen. First uh, Samuel fifteen twenty two, and Samuel said, "As the Lord hath great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of God, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams." Sometimes we think a sacrifice can replace obedience. You can't sow and be disobedient. All you are is a disobedient sower. You ever heard or seen people like this? Man, I ain't seen you in church in, in a while. Uh, I'm going down heating, feeding homeless people. And they think that their sacrifices of feeding homeless people releases them from obedience to the word of God about gathering together with the believers. And God said, I ain't that, that's your sacrifice. That's not a sacrifice that is acceptable unto the Lord because obedience is better than sacrifice. I don't need your sacrifice. Matter of fact, Tampa is one of the most uh, cities that it pretty much be impossible to starve in this city. There's so much food here. So many people feeding people. Amen. God wants you in church. Then go feed. Amen. Obedient and let your sacrifice be in obedience. You're giving sacrifices, but they're in disobedience. So God doesn't honor it. That's when people come and they give offerings and don't tithe. I give my offering to the Lord, my five bucks, and you made 5,000. God don't even start counting until after you give the tithe. So we'll be blessed by it, amen, but as far as anything coming to you, that's disobedience. Look at your neighbor and say, stop writing your own Bible. Go back to his Bible, his book, amen? Get rid of your own theology. Get God's theology. Get God's word. We don't want your opinion. Opinions I've seen mess people up. Get out of the will of God. Get crazy. Get cuckoo. Get rebellious. Try to rise up against leaders. That's where your opinion gets you. You know how many times I've seen uh, other people rise up on bishop? You can't tell. I'm like, man, you guys have no fear of God. No fear of God. Total dishonor. Total disrespect. That's it. And he still take you back. Now listen. The Bible talks about these people. Two more points and we're out of here. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into heaven's kingdom. It's only those who persist in doing the will of my heavenly father. On the day of judgment, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, don't you remember us? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons and do many miracles in your name? But I will have to say to them, go away from me, you lawless rebels. I've never been joined to you. That was your deal. That wasn't my deal. You were doing it, but it was in disobedience to me. You're a bunch of rebels. It's possible to be doing a good thing, but it be the wrong thing. It's possible to appear right in the eyes of men, but be totally wrong in the eyes of God. God told Saul to utterly destroy the Amalekites, everything, even their cattle. He chose not to. He kept animals. He spared their king. And when confronted about it, he lied and said he wanted to sacrifice to the Lord. The Lord said obedience is better than sacrifices. You should have did what I told you to do. I don't want your sacrifice. And let me say this. The reason he wanted Amalekite destroyed because he didn't kill them and they rose up and David had to deal with them. They're the ones that burnt down his whole camp. So he knew he seen that. So utterly destroy these people. Old Testament. 
Now listen, he never recovered from this Saul and his, his disobedience. Instead of repenting, he began to justify his actions. Saul fell out of a relation with the Lord, and he couldn't hear from the Lord anymore. Listen to this. So he began to consult with a witch to get direction. Here's a huge indicator that you are getting into rebellion. When you fall out of a relationship with spiritual authority and you begin to join with other people that are in disobedience and other people that are practicing witchcraft. You don't even realize it previously in obedience. You would have never even fellowship with them. But now because you're rebellious just like them, you're of the same spirit. There's no conviction because now there is agreement. I'm amazed. Something that happens around here. Guys blow up that, take off that. And I noticed they automatically connect with everybody else that like is like that. You see them riding together, hanging out. They never hung out in here together. But they get out of here in both in disobedience and they start hanging out there because now they have an agreement. Now they're under the same spirit. So now we can fellowship. I resist that. I've had some situations happen here, and I felt the temptation to join with somebody else that had a complaint about the ministry, a complaint about the, I had to resist that and say, no, I'm not getting into that. That's going to take me away. That's going to take me into disobedience. I got to deal. I got to work this out with me and God. I got to work this out in my spirit. I'm not going to feed this thing that needs to die. I'm not going to feed this disobedience. Hallelujah. God bless you too much. This thing will save your life. Last point. The Bible says the rebellious dwell in a dry land. It's not the promised land. It's not the dream land. It's a dry land. Now listen, the thing that powers rebellion is stubbornness. This means that you are perversely unyielding. You won't yield with the Lord. You're stubborn. You're stiff-necked. You're rigid. You won't be pliable. You won't adjust and adapt. You become difficult to handle and manage. You know, we all have the ability to be stubborn, and God gives us that. But that stubbornness is not, is, if it's used in the right way, it can protect your life from sin and destruction. But sometimes what we do, we use it against God himself, and we become stubborn against God. We hold God like this. Psalms 32, 8 and 9. The Lord says to you, I will stay close to you, instructing and guiding you along the pathway of your life. I will advise you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. So don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn when I take you where you have never been before. Don't make me tug and pull you along. Just come with me. If you're stubborn and rebellious, God is like, my God, you, you, you heard the term out. You're stubborn, you're stubborn as a mule. God don't want to be like, oh my God. You know what, what? If you're pulling something, it's fine. Finally, you say, you know what? Let it go. That's what you don't want God to say, let it go. Bust your head. And then when you break that stubborn spirit and become humble, now I can lead you again. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to wrap it up right there. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand to your feet. Amen. God's trying to get you into your dream. And sometimes uh, correction needs to come to get you in proper alignment. How many people know you can uh, appear to be right and be completely off in your psyche, in your spirit, in your perception, and in the way you handle things? Amen. This, the spirit of the Lord knows that. You can hide from men, but you can't hide from God. God is going to deal with that. I mean, he's going to speak to that. Ain't you glad you didn't come here for some little cute, nice, merry, crazy message? Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, guys, at the, uh, a couple of years ago when the Lord began to deal with me on the church, one of the things he began to tell me is be, you know, he said, we're a church. We're not a revival meeting. We're not a prophetic meeting. We're not like uh, 
no structure. It's a church service. So he said, if you want a church, you want to build a church, <laughs> then you got to respect people's times. You know, people got engagements and they come and your members are coming back. <laughs> it's not like a conference where I might not see these people. I better give them the whole deal and hold them all day. We're not doing that. Amen. So uh, part of honor is honoring one another. So that's why we uh, did trim the announcements down. And that's why I'm actually about to close the service right now. But I'm going to have the altars open. Amen. And uh, we're going to have some music playing. And if you need any special prayer, amen, um, come on up. Amen. So the Lord can bless you. Amen. But we want to honor. I want to stick with that. Started to get away from it. Now on uh, uh, Joel and Keith, thank you guys for yesterday. Um, powerful time with the youth. Uh, Wednesday, we had 17 youth come. So on Wednesdays, I got to be mindful that these kids, some of them drive. I need to, they don't need to be leaving here at 10 o'clock at night. And God forbid something happened to them. We don't need to get them out at a decent hour, amen. And I want to stay on what the Lord spoke to me at the beginning and honor the, the body of Christ and people's time, amen. Church service, amen, because they're coming back, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let me say this. We had Friday night worship. With no limits, and they told me only 15 people showed up. So I can't take this service and try to do that, amen. I, I gave an opportunity for people that wanted that type of service to come do it, and the response wasn't good. So we're reconsidering that now, maybe do it quarterly or with a baptism or something. But, you know, so what's the deal, amen? And everybody's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But when the, 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 the day shows up, oh, man, uh, I want a pizza. My Netflix just uh, uploaded the new, the new episodes. I'll get the next one, amen? <laughs> amen, let me stop. Amen. I like that I can be real with y'all. Playing up here like everything's all right. Everything fine, everything glorious. We had a glorious time, amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Before we close tonight, we always want to ask the question, is there anyone here you have never accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Accepted what he did at the cross of Calvary to provide forgiveness for your sins and redemption. Anybody here, you have never accepted the Lord and you say, you know what, Pastor, I need to do that. Anybody. Anybody need to rededicate your life to the Lord? Yes, sir. Come on up, my brother. I know this man. Pastor Wally. Hallelujah. I know this brother. Amen. Welcome. I'm going to be right with you. Amen. Anybody else? You feel the tug of the Holy Spirit on your heart? Just that pull telling you you need to go up there. That's the Lord. Don't harden your heart. Come on up. Amen. Pastor Jeanette, can you come, come on up? Amen. My brother right here. Amen. Okay, so what we're going to do. We're going to be praying for those here. But if you need any special prayer, healing in your body, if you need a, a word, just somebody to exhort you as we close the service out, come on up. Amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Put that song champion on. Let's go out on a high note. Amen. Lift your hands up to the Lord. Father, we just bless you. We thank you for the praise and worship, Lord. We felt your mighty presence, your anointing, your glory. Thank you for the word. Thank you that uh, impartation has, has come. And Father God, we thank you. Watch over your word to perform and you give us the grace not only to hear the word, but do, be a doer of the word. So Father, I thank you right now and I bless your people according to your word. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. Be blessed. Come on up, prayer team.